During World War II, British engineer Barnes Wallace invented a bouncing bomb. On the surface, that might sound like a completely unnecessary invention, but in reality, it was vital to one of World War II's most famous raids. And Wallace's bouncing bomb is also one of the most masterful pieces of engineering in history. But why a bouncing bomb? Well, specifically, the bomb was designed to bounce on water. The idea was that if you had a bomb that bounced across a body of water, much like skipping a stone, you could destroy the dams the Germans had built all along the Ruhr Valley. If you could take out the German dams, you could cause massive flooding, take out a water supply, and cripple any hydroelectricity they were producing to go towards their war effort. Though many of the original documents and scientific calculations about the raid on German dams, known as Operation Chastise, were coincidentally lost in a flood in the 1960s, what is clear through other evidence and surviving anecdotes is that the Germans did consider their dams to be important enough to be a potential target for their enemies, and took the time to place torpedo nets in front of the dams to protect them. So, seeing as they were protected against torpedoes, Wallace decided to come up with another way to bust the dams. Wallace calculated that to do any meaningful damage, a single four-ton bomb had to be detonated right up against the dam wall at a depth of about 30 feet below the water. But in those days, the technology wasn't in place for aircraft to drop bombs from a high altitude with any reasonable measure of accuracy, so simply dropping a bomb straight down in front of or on top of the dam wasn't an option. But what if you could bounce a bomb across the water just like skimming a stone? Another piece of the puzzle that was discovered in early experiments is that in order to bounce across the water with any accuracy, and to be able to make it bounce while still dropping the bomb from a not suicidal height, the bomb needed to have backspin, just like a drop shot in tennis. With backspin, the bomb would be levitated by what's called the Magnus effect. Essentially, the backspin would counter the downward pull of gravity, causing the bomb to hit the water more gently. If it hit the water too hard, it would just explode on impact and do no damage to the dam itself. Even with the backspin, the Lancaster bombers would have to fly at just 60 feet above the water to get the job done. Initially, since most of his experiments were done with marbles and golf balls, Wallace thought that his bomb would have to be spherical, even though it was easier to make cylindrical bombs. They went so far as to make a spherical wooden casing to place the cylindrical bombs into, but after a few more tests, they realized that they didn't need the sphere at all. The cylindrical spinning bomb worked just fine on its own. The actual raid happened on May 17, 1943, with 19 Lancaster bombers flying out to destroy some German dams. The first plane lined itself up on a dam, flying at 240 miles per hour at an altitude of 60 feet to effectively deliver Wallace's bouncing bomb. The bomb was released about a half a mile in front of the dam, bounced five or six times and sank just short of the wall. When the bomb reached 30 feet under the water, it triggered a massive explosion right next to the dam wall. In the end, it took five planes dropping their bouncing bombs before the first dam was breached. Though Operation Chastise's overall effect on the end result of World War II is open to interpretation, what isn't open to interpretation is the genius level engineering and science that went into the build of the bouncing bombs. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more of history's weirdness that you won't find in your textbooks. All those textbooks that you had to give back. No one has their textbooks anymore, right? I don't have mine. Anyway, there's this video here. There's this one here. There's more stuff here. There's more good stuff. If you liked it, stick around.